Alrighty, so we're going to move uh, into our next chapter. Um, so we've been talking about, or we did talk about um, diseases and kind of how they did their thing and talking about epidemiology. So now we're going to look at how the microbes will um, actually cause disease. So again, pathogenicity is um, patho meaning disease, genicity meaning like how it how it starts or how it begins. So um, looking at that. Okay, so we're going to first look at how the microorganisms actually enter the host. So the worksheet that you all did yesterday, hopefully it wasn't too bad or confusing or anything like that. Um, but we're going to kind of look at the, uh, the different parts of that. All right, so again, pathogenicity, the ability of um, a microbe to cause disease or to begin the disease process. Um, and then virulence is going to look at the degree of, of that. So the easier time the microbe has to cause disease, um, then the higher the, the virulence. And then if it's a particular microbe that really has to work at it in order to overcome the host defenses, then it would have a low virulence. So in order for something to cause disease, then the pathogen has to gain access to the host. So it's got to get in somehow. And we'll, we'll look at the different ways that it can enter the host. Um, some microbes um, that uh, do not cause disease, um, do not cause disease by directly damaging the tissue, but is more because of the fact that the waste product has built up and we'll look at um, different examples of that. So again, how the microbe actually enters um, the body is going to be known as the portal of entry. And we'll look at all the different ones that you could possibly go through. Okay, so possible points of entry is going to be the mucosal membranes and skin or into this directly into the skin or under the under the skin which is going to be known as the parenteral route and we'll look at that so looking at the mucosal membrane so this is um anything in the respiratory tract gastrointestinal genital urinary and uh, the conjunctiva and we'll look at um, those so respiratory tract, so again, anything that you breathe in, so your nose can pick up um, different bacteria, anything coming down your throat is going to pick up bacteria, and then your lungs itself can pick up bacteria. Gastrointestinal, so anything that you put in your mouth, um, they can get in in your mouth, in your throat, in your stomach, in your intestines, wherever. Uh, genital urinary, so that's going to be the... Um, uh, urinary system and also uh, uh, the, the genital systems as well, both male and female. And then conjunctiva is going to be like the lining of your eye. Um, so the white parts of your eye, you have a tiny little membrane layer that's on it, and um, it's going to uh, it could pick up diseases too. So this is why it's important that you wash your hands and you don't touch your face a lot during the sick season because um, you could get sick via taking in microbes through your eye, which sounds disgusting. Most cases, um, diseases are going to enter in through the gastrointestinal, so something that you ate, or coming in through the respiratory tract, so something that you breathed in. You can also get diseases through your skin. Uh, your skin is your first line of defense between you and the bacteria. It's a barrier between you and the outside world. And so um, if your skin is unbroken, then it's in, in, um, the microorganisms will not be able to penetrate through. Only when that barrier is broken are we going to have disease. So um, things like 
you know, you can get touched with a particular bacteria. It doesn't mean it's going to get in. But if there's a hole or if you have a cut, then, you know, you're not so safe. Okay. So it can come in through a hair follicle or a sweat gland duct. Um, it can get in through a cut, like I said before. Some microorganisms that actually bore holes into skin. So something that poked you to get access to the skin can grow on or in the skin. Um, so again, gaining access any way it can. And then, like I said, the conjunctiva is the membrane over the eyelids and the eyes. And so it can be absorbed through that and um, disease can get into there. The parenteral route. So this is anything that's underneath the skin. So when in the medical world, when we talk about shots, we're talking about that it's going through the parental route because it's going underneath the skin. So we're poking a hole in you to inject whatever it is, medicines, vaccines, whatever. So that's parental, meaning underneath the skin. So any sort of puncture or, like I said, injections, a bite, cut, wounds that are deeper than just this very surface. Surgery is a big one. Um, it's all going to get into the parental route. So examples of that would be HIV, hepatitis, tetanus, gangrene. So if you got poked by a nail um, and you got tetanus, that came into the parental route. Hepatitis is usually can be caused by people sharing needles along with HIV, um, sharing needles and steps. So that would be an injection. So di different microbes are kind of particular about um, how how they cause disease in um, in their host cells. So they have a preferred way to get in. Um, so whether that's respiratory or being digested or trying to get into the skin, um, they're going to have the way that they like to go. If they don't get in access via that way, then it may not cause disease at all. So if it's a respiratory type infection and it that particular microbe landed on your skin, if it can't penetrate your skin, then it's not going to make you sick. Okay, so looking at this question here, list three portals of entry and describe how microorganisms gain access through each. So again, that's going to be um, getting underneath the skin, so that would be the parenteral route. Um, getting in through uh, the skin itself and then um, the mucous membranes. And we just kind of went over about how they gain access through each. So. Again, just because you have one microbe that lands on your skin, and maybe that is the portal of entry, one is probably not going to make you ill. But if you were submerged in a bath of disease-causing microorganisms, more likely you're going to get sick. So the number of microbes is also going to determine whether your defense systems of your body is going to get overwhelmed by the amount of microbes that are there. So an increase in the different pathogens. So um, being, it could be bacteria, viruses, whatever. An increased number of those is going to increase the likelihood of you actually getting the disease, which makes sense. So there's two things that we can look at. An ID50 and an LD50. So ID stands for infectious dose. And then the 50 is for 50% of the sample population. So looking at our classroom, we have 11 people. So if we add the teacher just to make it an even number, so we have 12. So infectious dose means that how many microbes does it take for 50% of the population to get that disease. So our population would be our classroom. So there's 12 people in there. 
So for six people to get sick, how many microbes did it 